Hello everyone and welcome to So Many Games So Little Time. My name is Joachim and today we're going to learn how to play Vengeance Roll and Fight. So of course, first we need to do the setup. This is all the stuff that you need. And obviously one of the first things that you're going to take is your own uh, dashboard, right? Your play board. Uh, here you go. So you just put it, uh, I'll put it on the side for now. And then you also choose a scenario. So just to make it easy, we just take the first one, number one, because you don't need to do anything else here, to be honest. Um, so I'll put this on the side, everything else can go. So I'll put this on top of this for now, because we do something else. Of course, first we take one of the pens, the markers, yep, that can go. Then you can see I put everything in little bags here because if you look at this page when you're doing setup, you have to decide with how many players you are playing. And depending on the, how many players you're playing, those are going to be the dice you need. So for me, um, I always play solo. That's why I basically put uh, 20 dice in here and then the three flashback dice. So for sure, we're going to be needing the three flashback dice. Okay. So let's take those out already. So one, two, and three. I'll put this up here. It'll have its own uh, tile later on. And then if you play with two players, it's 24 dice, three players, 35, four players, 46. Or if you play solo, because I'm gonna do the setup for solo, but basically there's not much difference in multiplayer, to be honest. So in solo is 20 to play easy, all right? So I have here the dice tray that came with the game. It is too small, to be honest, but you know, we're gonna use it anyway, just because it's with the game and why not? So 20 dice. So we have here five, seven, all right. Let's just get it all out and then count them. So three, five, seven, nine, 10. 13, 15, 17, 19, 20, actually 24. Yeah, because it's actually set up for two players. Good thing I counted. So all these other bags can go away if you play solo. So boom. Then you need to choose a character. So you either choose one randomly from this bag or you shuffle the cards of a character. So in this case, I'm just going to randomly take one from here and it'll be, dum, 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 dum. I'm not looking, it'll be, Oh, Lea Pistolera. It's really not on purpose, even though my playthrough also has Lea, Pistol Lea Pistolera. It's her again. So what are you going to do with her uh, token? You are going to put them, i put this here, I'll put this here. You're going to put her at the start spot. There we go. All right, that's good for the start. Then we're going to take her card, which it really seems like I organized that I got this set this up, but I really didn't. It also has a special ability at the beginning of resolution if there are two or more enemies in the same room as Leia, suffer a wound. Okay, so we'll put it here for now. What else do you need? Well, of course, you're going to need a bad guy, right? So this is all mixed up, episode one and two. Uh, before we do the bad guy, I also found these two player aids. So we we'll use these as well. Especially solo, it's easy because, you know, there's only one person. Before we do the bosses, we also have the flashback tile. So you can see you have spaces here for the flashback, flashback dice. And the one, two, three, four are the rounds. So we need to find a uh, villain, a bad guy, the boss. You can see there's a bunch of them in here, including three promo ones, which is the uh, creators, right? Um, so all these, you just shuffle them up and you draw one, right? So I just take this person here. And that is Smiley. During setup, draw a second boss into the room with uh, the most stars, your choice of tied. You must kill both bosses for the 5 VP reward. So, okay, let's do another one. Limp Oscar. Oscar. Limp Oscar deals wounds equal to the number of uh, these guys still alive. And they are called... You have to kill them, hit them twice. Their name is... Blah, 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 um, tough guys. Yeah, yeah, tough guys. So then these cards can actually go back and it's done. Same with the other uh, heroes, also not necessary. So they are gone, go back to the box. And then of course we have Lea Pistolera. So we need her items and skills. So you look at the color 
make sure you have the correct color. And then you take out her tiles. Yep. And all the other tiles can go away. Easy to clean, right? A lot of stuff goes away. And then you look at them. Okay, then you look at them. So, for example, these blue ones, these are items. So you put them anywhere at the bottom. The order really doesn't matter. So she has stims, she has a sniper rifle, a med pack, and extra ammo. Ammo, extra ammo, extra ammo. Shoot becomes shoot, shoot, shoot. I'll move up a bit higher. There you go. And then we also have the skills. So the skills, you're going to be putting them around here. So because I have more space, I'll move these over here. Up. And these are the skills that are, have not yet been bought. Now what I do is I order them according to their uh, cost. So five is the highest. We have a four, a four, another four. And I think everything else is four with one more three. So yeah, and then a three here. So these you can buy, and once you have them, you put them on the side, either here or there. You can see the arrows here, all right? These are the four basic ones that you start with. So as far as setup is concerned, this is it. There's just a small change that we need to do. Let me get this out of the way. Um, and that is you only start with four dice. Everything else, all the other dice, they go into the dice pool where you'll be grabbing from. So this is one difference with the... Uh, multiplayer game solo game these are all your dice so you don't have to worry about other people taking from your stack but multiplayer everybody will share one big pile where they'll be grabbing from during the game okay so this is it now this is the setup the only thing we have to do now if we have to, is we have to check first of all leah starts with three health you know that already nothing to do there okay a quick change here you can see some stuff is out here already doesn't really matter because I just realized the mistake and that is that uh, with Smiley it's 4 plus 4 that means he has a health of 4 and the other boss has also has a health of 4 so you basically just do 1, 2, 3, 4 and then 1, 2, 3, 4 and whoever you kill first will be the 1, 2, 3, 4 and then the second one will be the other 1, 2, 3, 4 even though these numbers at the bottom they will uh, there are points that you get for killing them okay so how does the game work exactly? Before I can tell you how the game works exactly, I would have to tell you, of course, what all the icons mean and so on. First of all, the boss is this guy. So that's Smiley. So he is here. So if you want to get to him, you have to go all the way around or through the rooms to get to him. Then we have Limp Oscar. Of course, he's sitting in the room with the most stars, the most loot. Stars are loot. So he would be here. Okay, but there's no icon whatsoever to signify that he's there. So in this case, I would suggest that you just take uh, a random die and just put it in that room to signify that he's there. So I'll just take a gun. There we go. Even though he's holding a knife, so maybe it'll just be like this. All right, so let's say Oscar is there. Okay, now, uh, what else can you see? There are four different henchmen. I already talked about the green ones. These are the tough guys. These ones are guys with machetes. They're called henchmen. The black ones are just grunts. And the blue ones are gunmen. So they all have their different strength and abilities that you have to take into account when you're moving around. So for example, the boss here. You cannot hit the boss until all the grunts have been killed. That's it. That's what's special about grunts. Okay. Tough guys, you have to hit them twice before they go down. That's why they have two hearts. All right. The henchmen here, they will damage you at the end of your turn if they're still alive in the same room as you. And then the gunmen, they will shoot you if you're in the same room and if you're in an adjacent room as well. So basically, if you're here, well, let's say if you're here, this guy and this guy will both shoot at you, which is, of course, really bad. So those are those are what those guys mean. Now, then you have some special areas like here, right? The six, the three, and the five. Those are basically uh, the den objectives. You can see there's only three of them. Um, sometimes there's more, but in this case, there's just three. So here it is if you have killed all of the henchmen on the map, so one, two, three, four, uh, five, six. Actually, if you just killed four of the six, then you get six points. But you do need to enter the room, otherwise you don't activate it. 
Here, if you have hit the boss, you get three points. But of course, you first have to go to the boss, hit him, and then go back here to activate the points. Here, you have to kill all the gunmen in adjacent rooms. That's what the air, air, arrows mean. Ugh. So of course, you have to kill these two guys and then this guy to be able to cash the five points. Now, something very important, and I can't stress it enough, is you have to really pay attention to the doorways, all right? Because in my first game, for some reason, I just thought I could just walk in here, which of course is wrong, so I made a mistake there. So make sure you always double check if you're going through the correct uh, rooms. I forgot to talk about one hen one more henchman, and that is the, the yellow ones. These are blockers. So if you go into a room with a blocker, then you cannot leave the room until they're dead. They will stop you. The other room, rooms, you can just run through them. That's fine. They won't stop you. They won't damage you. Nothing like that. But if you have a blocker, they will stop you unless you kill them. Then you also have the stars. I already mentioned them. Those are loot. Okay. Every time you get loot, every time you clear a room, so kill everybody, with a star or loot in it, you will cross out a spot. Okay. So if, let's say you've cleared everything here. You'll have a star there. And then you will be increasing your loot. And then the number next to the cross is how many points you'll get. So at this point, no, nothing yet. But if you clear this room, you'll have two more which means you have two points at the end of the game. Okay. All right. Then what else can we see here? Every room has this circle in the top left corner. That just means that you have entered that room. Okay. If you've been there, then you just cross it out. That means you've been there. That's important at the end of the game as well to find out uh, how you're going to get your exit and so on. So it's also important to realize when you're checking your loot, when your visited space has been ticked, you can get the loot there if you have, of course, cleared the room. Anything else you can see here is, of course, the boss damage track. So as you're injuring the boss, if you do, because you could have a whole game without even shooting at the boss, that's fine if you go for other uh, goals. But if you do hit him, every time you'll cross out. So normally in most games you go from high to low, not here you go from low to high because every time you cross it at the bottom you'll see your points that you'll be getting for the boss okay that's why this track is here so i think um we're already going a little bit into the territory of how to play but yeah all right so then let's see what else we have here of course something that's very obvious is these red uh, die faces those are the faces you find on all the dice right but of course, with these skills, it's also important to realize that some of these skills, these are the basic skills that you start with, these you have to buy. And sometimes on the tile, there will be a one on it. For example, here, the one X. That means you can only put die on, dice on them once. But if it doesn't have a one X, like for example here, you can put as many on them as you want later on. So some of the dice will also have a... Uh, double lightning well not double lightning not the basic dice the flashback dice have these so the double lightning the heart the loot icon and the brass knuckles those are on the uh, flashback dice which you will be using to activate stuff later on as i'm going through the rules so the double uh, lightning will be training the heart will be health loot and then items I think that's about it for the uh, general icons. Um, of course, you have the infinity symbol, which means you can always use them forever, as many times as you want. Um, and then you have the binoculars, which I'll explain in a second. Okay, let's just go over how to play and how everything works. So, when the game starts, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to be rolling your flashback dice, okay? So, you roll them. In this case, I have two binoculars, and then a training or brass knuckles. So as I'm using them, I'm going to be placing them on here. And you don't just have these three uh, abilities. You have one extra, which is a wild. Okay. You can see it here on the tile. One, two, three, and then plus another one. So for example, I could say the binoculars. What does that mean exactly? Binoculars means recon. 
and you can see binoculars here. So I have two recon, so I can spend them here, right? So important to know is that, for example, if I do this, I'll be able to use this action without any dice on them. Now I can still add more dice to them later on, but I already know before I start rolling dice that I can charge. Now there is an exception. If you do the double ones here, they have a one time, right? That means if there's a one time, I cannot put multiple ones on them. Okay, I'm restricted, I'm limited. So once I activate this with a recon, I cannot put dice on it anymore because it's already so easy to get. With these ones, however, if there's no one time, then I can do whatever I want. So if I have two recon, I can say, you know what, I'll have one shoot and I'll have one move. And then that's fine. Then we have here the brass knuckles or the uh, double lightning. The brass knuckles is what you use for the items. So I have one brass knuckle, so I could choose one item and then I can use it when I'm playing later on. For example, I could choose the sniper rifle. And then I'm not using the lightning, of course, I'm not training any skills. So in this case, I don't want to do the sniper rifle. I want to try to get some more skills because just relying on these seems a bit weak. So I'm going to do one training. You can see one lightning allows me to circle two spots. And then with my extra ability, like I said, we have a fourth ability. I'm going to do training again. And then after we've done the flashback phase, I can buy also a, a skill if I want to. I have four, so I could do these four or I can do uh, a three, which all means I have one left and so on. In this case, I'm going to get gun kata because gun kata is awesome. So I'll just put this here, and this is now mine to use during the roll phase. Also, you can see, if I keep training at one point, I'll reach this, this point, and then I'll get one point. If I keep going, it'll be two, three, four, five, with a maximum of six points. But then, of course, you'll be using a lot of flashback dice to train. Health, if I had rolled a heart, I have two options. Either I heal two, but as you can see, I'm at full health, so that's not necessary, or I give myself plus one health. And you can see, I can go up to six health maximum. So let's say I've been fighting and I've taken two hits and I roll health or I choose health, then I could say, okay, I heal two. And this will allow you to stay alive longer, of course. And then here, loot, that means if you uh, have an X, the loot you will be collecting because of here, right? Let's say you emptied some chambers, some rooms, and you have this open. Then if you have a loot action, you can say, you know what? I'm going to cross out one and then use a special action of the other ones again. Okay, so basically re reusing loot. But this does not affect your score at the end of the game. Because as you can see, when you have more and more loot, you also get more and more points with a maximum of 11. Yeah. All right, so once again, remember the items are already explained. You just tick the one and then you can use the items once and then you'll cross it out. So you're not ticking it actually, you'll just do like this, up, and then when you use it, you do this and then it's done. Okay, so there is a limit to how many times you can use stims, the sniper rifle, the med pack, and extra ammo. Okay, so at the bottom, we also have the scoring. So like I said, you get points for training. So if you reach all the way to here, you get one, you keep training, two, three, four, five, six. Loot is here, so maximum of 11. The boss, like if you kill the boss, you will be getting uh, the uh, maximum points of his health, plus five for killing the boss itself. Five would be here, and this would be his health, right? So in this case, Smiley would be eight. And um, the training, Maximum will be 6, loot, maximum will be 11. And then the den objectives, if you've done that, you would circle them to signify that you've done them. And then also untick them, of course, write the score there. Then we have escape. Let's say I'm here, right? And it's over. I've done four rounds. Then I need to escape. So then I need to find a road to escape. And I will have minus one point for every live enemy. So enemy enemy that's still alive in those rooms that I passed through. Okay. So sometimes it can be good to make sure you kill everybody. <laughs> so you don't lose, have minus points at the end of the game. Okay. So basically, 
The first phase was a flashback phase, which we've done, which we have now just done. And then you have the rolling phase. Now, how does that work? You take a timer, 45 seconds if you play easy solo, right? Um, or it goes lower to, um, what is it? How many? Uh, 30 seconds for medium and 25 for hard. And if you play uh, multiplayer during the rolling phase, there's no timer because it ends when you voluntarily stop rolling or you can't roll anymore. Because like I said, you'll be playing, you'll be sharing a pool and with multi multiplayer, you'll be taking from it constantly. So when the pool is empty or you can't do anything anymore and then everybody just stops, then that's it, okay? But how does a rolling face actually work? So you're gonna roll your dice, yeah. So, hop, 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 this is a result, right? And then you look at what you can possibly use. So once again, these ones, they are not activated. You didn't buy them, okay? It's just this one, the gun kata, and these four. So obviously it would be better to put this closer to here so you can quickly see what you need and so on. Also, if you're playing solo, 45 seconds, they go really fast, so you need to, don't, stop and think for too long because that'll be uh, bad for your results for sure but for now let's see i have two runners you can take all the time in the world you say okay you know what i have a move and uh, that's also the oh no actually even better i have a charge i have a runner i have a runner and i have two machetes so i've already used all my dice here so then immediately i'm going to take four new ones and roll again so in this case, I have two runners, a gun, and a knife, machete. So I'm just going to use two runners, take two more dice, and roll again. All right, so now it becomes interesting. I have one wound. So I have several options. First of all, this wound is basically on the side because I cannot re-roll that. It's a wound. The other three I can still use to assign, but as you can see, I can't really assign anything. I do have a runner and a machete, so I could go for a gun kata, or I could roll another runner and go for dash. Because if I place dice here, then I can heal one wound that I have here. But let's just see what happens with this one. Okay, I have another sword, not useful. Another wound. Okay, so this is bad. Now I can keep running, rolling these two in the hope that I have a dash, which means I can recuperate one wound, right? I cannot take from here, not at the moment. Another thing I can do is I take one wound, put it on my health, take another die, and then roll everything again. Or I can just keep these two. I don't have to re-roll them, but it just gives me the ability again to roll all the wounds I have accumulated here. So in this case, uh, I have three punches, put it here, take three more and you keep going now obviously if i only had 45 seconds i would have finished by now right and just for fun let's add a gun kata as well and we'll stop there but once again with multiple people you're going to be going as fast as possible in this uh, shared dice pool because with multiple people you only have two people you only have 24 dice solo you have 20 on easy but of course it goes down as you uh, play medium and hard Okay, so what is the next phase then? Next phase is the resolution phase, okay? So in the resolution phase, you're basically gonna use everything that you have and use it here. So this is the setup that we started with, right? We had the two recons, so we have one dash, we have uh, one fire, we also have a charge and so on, and a punch and gun kata, which is shoot, shoot, shoot. So I'm going to start with gun kata. What does that mean? I'm just going to remove the dice and do what it says. It says shoot, shoot, shoot. Now, when you shoot, you're basically going to uh, hit people in the adjacent room. You cannot shoot someone who is in the same room as you, okay? It is outside that you're shooting, which is why I'm doing gun kata, because I can immediately take some of these guys out. So I have a triple shoot. So I'll do one, two, and three. Okay, done. That's gun kata done. So then I also have a punch, which is hit and hit, a move and a charge. So I'm gonna charge into the room, up, which is a move plus hit. So I move in and I hit this one. 
I also enter this room, so that's done, and I also activate this. Now I just activate it. I can't say I have it because I haven't hit the boss yet, but I have cleared this room. Sadly, it doesn't give me anything. There's no loot here or whatever. So also, I still have a dash left and a punch. So I can move one space and then hit twice. Why can I hit twice? Because it says one hit, but two hits if one of these dice is a double machete. So I could go somewhere and double hit. Now, for a smiley that we have here, uh, they don't really do anything. Except for Limp Oscar deals wounds equal to the number of um, strong guys still alive. Which is a bit crazy because there's one, two, three, four, five alive. And I only have three health. I forgot one thing, by the way. So I'm quickly going to say that at the end of the roll phase, I was also supposed to do this. This is removed and I'm actually now uh, wounded for one. Okay. Okay, so I still have a move and a punch. And I know there's a boss here, there's a boss there. And then Limp Oscar, his um, his ability. We're just going to say that it doesn't, doesn't count because he's just with him. But... Um, or maybe it does count, but it seems really overpowered for this scenario, to be honest. It's a bad example for how to play, but because he would basically kill me every round. Or I guess I would just have to rush and kill the strong guys as quickly as possible, which would make it very difficult. Anyway, let's just say, for the sake of this example, that his ability doesn't happen. Okay, so I continue my turn, so dash and punch. So I think I'm going to go down and punch this one. So I, yeah, well, I'll go in here actually. I want to have the loot. So I'm going to go down. So I go down with the dash up I move once. And then I have double hits with the punch. So I kill the uh, henchman and I kill and I hit this guy for one. Okay. And also, this is now done because I'm here, All right. Okay, now that's done. That is the end of my turn here, all right. And then we see Smiley doesn't really do anything. It just says, makes it more difficult to get the five VPs. She, if there are two or more enemies in the same room as Leia, suffer a wound. There are two or more, so she suffers another wound. She now has two wounds, okay. That's how that works. So... Um, what else can we then do in this case? There are some other actions that we haven't done. For example, we have an action called Evade, but it's not here in the game, all right? Uh, none of the people that came out have Evade. Now, what does Evade do? Evade means that you can uh, mark a minion in your room, but they're not hit or not wounded or whatever. They're inactive. Whatever abilities they have, it doesn't happen, okay? And if there's loot in the room, you can actually take the room as if it's cleared, as if they're dead. They just don't know you're there, so you're just basically kill, just stealing it, right? And at the end of the round, there, I mean, start of the next round, their evade will go away, all right? It basically ends at the resolution phase. So the resolution phase is the final phase. All right, so there's also a jump. So jump, you can basically jump in from one room to another room and so on. Um, and also, if you do that, the room that you are in, that you're jumping in, like the middle room, like let's say you're here, jump, jump. This room is not visited, okay? Like technically you jump through it or over it or whatever. So uh, if there's an objective there or, or loot or whatever, you can't do that. Okay, also if there's a blocker in that room, you just jump over them. They don't activate. Everything else I think I did. Heal, obviously, is you're going to clear one of these spaces here. Shoot, I explained. Hit, I explained. Move, I explained. And kill, some, one, some of these actions allow auto kills, but it's also not here. And basically just instantly kill something, uh, so an, an enemy, okay? All right, so at this point... I activated this one, right? But that doesn't apply yet. But next round, if I shoot him, then it would apply. But I think this is uh, basically how you play the game. You're going to be moving around. You're going to be trying to hit the bosses. So right now, the next phase is the uh, 
resolution phase, right? And during the resolution phase, you're going to be... Oh, actually, I forgot. I still have a move and a f shoot because these two were from there. So what I could do is... It's a move plus shoot, so I have to move first. So yeah, in this case, of course, I would have done it differently. Um, I would have kept my dash. Well, I don't have to move it if I don't want to. So I can just use uh, shoot to shoot someone in the adjacent room, which in this case, for example, would this guy would be this guy. And then I still have a move left, but I'm not going to move out or I'm not going to move in. Actually, I will move in. Why not? Yeah. So up, move here then. And then I'm also, this is also visited, but I can't clear the loot because there's still enemies there. Okay, so next, the final phase. So once again, to uh, repeat the phases, we had the flashback phase where we use these dice and bought stuff. We have the rolling phase where we did the whole 45 seconds or in multiplayer until the dice run out. Then we have the fighting phase, which we already did, move around, uh, punch, 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 remove stuff, and so on. And then we have the resolution phase, where we will all together uh, simultaneously, because basically almost everything is simultaneously, but we'll all simultaneously clean up our board. What does it mean? You clean out the um, recons that you used, right? That goes away. You collect loot in each of the uh, cleared rooms, and also the visited rooms, actually. So no, you have to be in the room and also have cleared it, of course, because they won't allow you to get the loot. Then you're going to get one wound for each henchman, henchman and or the boss located in your current room. So the fact that I took a wound because of uh, the two enemies still applies, but I get an extra wound, which is good for the example because I'm going to get knocked out. But we'll talk about that in a meeting. I'm going to get a beating, actually. And then if I have any available items or abilities uh, marked resolution, you do that. But here, it says here, start a resolution, kill an enemy in a room with no enemies killed. Yeah. So uh, a grunt, actually, because it has the icon of a grunt. No, no, it's icon of an enemy, not just a grunt, any enemy. But anyway, and then if your health track is full of wounds, which is true, here, you wipe it out. But then you basically take a uh, beating. That means now I cross this out, and on my next round, I can only roll three dice every time instead of four. And if I take another beating, I am dead, and I'm out of the game. Okay? So it's very important to try not to die. <laughs> um, and then if there are any evaded minions on your board, you will then clear out the evaded minions. But once again, there's no skills here to evade, so it doesn't really matter. And then that's it. You just do that four times because now we finished round one. Hop, hop, that's done. And then we do uh, two, three, four. And then we add up the dice, uh, add up the dice. Then we add up the scores that we have at the bottom that we have accumulated. And that is basically how you play vengeance, roll and fights. I have a gameplay video as well, but sadly there are some mistakes there, but it does show you, the mistakes are mentioned. And it also does show you how it flows and how the solo game works exactly. Okay, so I do feel like some of these uh, bosses, for example, Limp Oscar to me is crazy. But would he be as powerful in the map that is on the back here? Yeah, there's also five guys here. So basically when you're fighting Limp Oscar, you need to just get rid of those guys ASAP. I just run through or run here and shoot them like crazy. So he only hits you for three, but then you're already dead. <laughs> or you have to basically with the flashbacks immediately increase your health to, uh, to limit his damage. But yeah, deals wounds equal to the number of guys still alive is, oof, that is tough. But yeah, anyway, this is how you play the game. Um, be sure to check out the, the, the playthroughs. Check the comments as well in case I made some mistakes. That sometimes happens, sadly. But yeah, it is what it is. All right. My name is Joachim. This was So Many Games for a Little Time. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.